we have a lot of large brand companies that come through and test a product and often it won't pass. And it could be something as simple as you know, the, the bottle design was amazing. You know, we're all excited yeah. about it because we know it's going to be really great to get it out into the um, market for people with arthritis and anybody else. But they forgot to put a tab on the inner seal and no one could get the inner seal open. Hey, it's Valley Monsters on Packaging a Box. Today, we're talking to Debbie Goki from Arthritis Foundation. She's the VP of Consumer Health and Ease of Use. Now, why would I have somebody from the Arthritis Foundation on a packaging podcast? Well, because who has the hardest time opening a packaging? people with arthritis, and whose decision is it on what the packaging looks like and how it functions? It's ours, the designers, the brands, the people that make the decisions on the packaging. So what a perfect combination for us to learn the challenges of anybody with arthritis and have Debbie kind of dispel some of these myths, right? Personally, when I think of somebody with arthritis, I think of my grandparents, somebody that's old and somebody's having a hard time getting into pills because that's what you get when you're old. Maybe I'm just being ageist, but it's just the reality. In this episode, she goes through the different types of people that have arthritis and how four out of five adults are suffering from it and even children. So take a listen, take some notes, reach out to Debbie and the Arthritis Foundation. They've got a certification program that they can test your package and make sure it's accessible by everybody. And you can even put a seal on your packaging. And one of the key things, if you don't even get to the show and you just listen to the intro, if you're suffering from arthritis and you're having a hard time opening up a pack, when you pick a pack off the shelf and it's easy for you to use, you never change your brand. So talk about brand loyalty by design. It's one of the key things that I walked away from and one of the things that I'm looking at in everything that I design is how can I make it easier to get into so that when somebody that's suffering from arthritis or has a hard time opening packs, they can get in, they can use the product and they're going to choose that product over anything else every single time. So do yourself a favor. Take a listen to this episode. If you're watching this on YouTube, do me a favor, subscribe. If you're watching this on uh, Spotify, go ahead and leave a review. And if you're listening to this anywhere else on podcasts, then do me a favor, go to packagingonbox.com and leave a review there as well. Leave us any comments, questions on LinkedIn. Find us there. Let's get to the show. All right. So today I'm super excited to have uh, Deb Goki, Vice President of Consumer Health and Ease of Use. We're going to talk about arthritis. Right? This is a packaging podcast, but I saw you post something on LinkedIn and immediately thought about, okay, as a packaging designer, how do I design for people with arthritis? So Deb, I love it. how are you? How are you doing? I'm super excited to jump into this. I'm great. It's so, it's so nice to have, um, have you host me on, on the show today. So it's really exciting to be here and share a little bit about ease of use, what we do, what the Arthritis Foundation does. Excellent. So, um, I mean, let's just jump right into this. Like, Okay. What is arthritis? So great question. Arthritis is a chronic illness that impacts joints. And um, there are more than 60 million adults in the United States that live with arthritis and hundreds of thousands of kiddos that are diagnosed with arthritis annually. And um, what the Arthritis Foundation does is they're the leading nonprofit organization in the U.S. that um, works to find a cure. We have an advocacy team that focuses in D.C. on a lot of advocacy. We have a science and re research team that works on all of our science and, you know, the cure and um, and our mission team, which really works on community connections. Our headquarters are in Atlanta, and we have um, 54 offices throughout the country to really um, be able to help um, people with arthritis throughout the U.S. connect with each other and learn and the resources that we provide to the arthritis community. And from a design standpoint, like I don't, I don't think arthritis is like at the top of the list when we're thinking about packaging, um, especially today with so many brands launching daily, um, yeah. so many different types of products that it's like all about the excitement and the flash. And we want to get something that's to market and, you're like, well, this seems easy enough for me to open. And, you, and then you can move on to the graphics and the materials and the quoting and yep. everything else, yep. like all the exciting stuff. <clears throat> like, have you, uh, I see that you went to, to Pack Expo. Um, like how involved do you get in, in packaging? So I get involved at a, a little bit more of a high level. So what mm -hmm. my role really is, is to work with companies on, um, you know, and to help them sort of start thinking about designs. We have um, an, a lab that we work with that 
that does all of our testing for us. Mm -hmm. So they do both lab and human factor testing on products and packages that um, a company might think, okay, this is great. Um, you know, we think that we've designed this with a lot of accessibility. It's easy to open. And so um, typically they reach out to us and I coordinate with them, coordinate with the lab. And then if they pass, they can license the ease of use seal and they can use it in all of their marketing. So it's kind of exciting to, um, you know, I don't have a design degree. So for me, it's really exciting to be part of the process, but to really start thinking about, you know, what does this look like and how does it look for communities? I just, um, I read a McKinsey report from August a couple months ago and um, they did uh several consumers. It was a, a post-COVID consumer shopping habit and what consumers are looking for and packaging. And they're looking for hygiene, shelf life, and mm -hmm. ease of use was third behind them, which was really um, surprising and exciting to me. But if you think about sure. it, you know, I don't have arthritis in my hands and I don't have joint pain. There are so many products or so many packages that I struggle to open. I'm, I'm yeah. sure you've come across that too. Yeah. And when you think about arthritis, I think so often people think of arthritis as it's an old person's disease. It's not very painful. You know, it's that there are two thirds of people in the United States that have arthritis that are under age 65. And, you know, if, if you have any um, joint pain or, you know, your, your fingers can't move accordingly, you're not going to be able to open something. And it's so interesting. We've had we have a lot of large brand companies that come through and test a product and often it won't pass. And it could be something as simple as, you know, the, the bottle design was amazing. You know, we're all excited yeah. about it because we know it's going to be really great to get it out into the um, market for people with arthritis and anybody else. But they forgot to put a tab on the inner seal and no one could get the inner seal open. So when it went through the human factor evaluations, it didn't, it didn't pass and it had already gone to market. So it's of course too expensive to go back into redesign. So, you know, there's a lot of different things that we are working on and experiencing and engaging with from a company standpoint. Now, you know, um, as you talk, okay. So as you're talking through, a seal that's difficult to open, you know, I'm picturing some of the different yogurts or, um, yeah. just, I don't know, like maple syrup. Like I'm just thinking through my, what's in my fridge. Like when I open it and they've yeah. got those little seals that they, they, they do have like those little square edges, mm -hmm. but I can barely grab them. And if I do grab them and pull them, sometimes it gets impossible or it tears. And then when I'm picturing somebody with arthritis trying to interact struggle. with that packaging You'd struggle yeah i'm picturing think, an old person is, you need am to I picture ter am young I terrible person. for that <laughs> am i terrible yes yes you need to picture a younger person <laughs> or kiddo who can't maybe hold a crayon because they have mm -hmm. so much you know joint pain that they're not able to um to do that we have um you know when you think about the products um, that are certified or the packages. Um, I mean, I'll show you one that's just, if you look at this bottle, it's, you know, it's got indentations in it. It's wow. easy to open. The product has a seal on it. So in market, you're, you can find the seal. And there are several products like that from garden nozzles to writing utensils, um, just a lot of different varieties. Um, but we, um, we just are just believe very strongly that from a design perspective, when you're thinking about what does that look like, you know, from making something accessible and easily um, adaptable. We're working with some industry experts right now and we'll launch in January and I'll send you the first two hot off the press when Amazing. I, I, when I can do so. But we have um, their design guidelines and what our goal with that is we want to be able to help the engineering and designers who are thinking about products. Here's some issues and here's how you can correct those. And is it, you know, one pound of pressure or is it five pounds of pressure? And is it um, like if you think of a trigger spray, is it? one finger or is it three fingers and what is what does that look like from a bottle shape and size so those are coming um we do expect to have two of them done in january i just got the the 
the final draft before the, the finished product to review this week. So our team is reviewing it and um, the company we're working with team is reviewing it. It's going to be really um, a game changer, I think, because it will hopefully eliminate some of those issues when a product comes in to test and they've done everything really thoughtful, but there's one thing that they leave off the counter and it's, you know, like an inner seal tab and it right. is, you know, so we want to be able to, we want to be able to help a company. If you think about it, a company that makes a design that is easier to use, they're creating consumers for life because once you get a product that you can open and it's easy to use, you're not going to switch brands. Um, we've yeah. done several studies um, where 72% of consumers would um, purchase a product that's easy to use and 54% would switch brands if the product was easier to use. And so I think there's a lot of, um, you know, just even when I talk to people about this, they're like, oh, wow, if I can get that open, it's a game changer. Let's take a quick break for idpdirect.com. Now, these guys are awesome. They are a packaging manufacturer. They are not a reseller. They're not a distributor. They actually own multiple factories around the planet and they make retail packaging. Bags, boxes, garment bags, fashion packaging, you name it, they do it. They even weave their own woven paper handles in-house. So you can specify any color, any thickness, any type of weave. They can do it because they own their factories. They've also gotten their full carbon inventory done on their factories, not using averages from the industry, they actually have data from each of their locations. One of them is completely solar. So check them out. They'll give you all their scope one, scope two, scope three, and even scope four, which I wasn't aware of, but they've got all the information ready for you. So if you're a brand and you're looking for packaging that you don't want to go through a distributor and you want to just go straight to the factory and have all your carbon emissions data ready for EPR or any of the other regulations that are out there that are making it difficult for you to buy packaging and import it, go to idpdirect.com. One last thing, do yourself a favor, go to idpdirect.com. They've got a recycling symbol icon guide that you can download. It's all the recycling symbols in vector format, free to use. You can grab them, place them on your packaging, doesn't matter. It's ready to go. It even gives you an explanation of what the recycling symbol is, what country to use it in, when to use it, and how to use it. And like I said, it's vector and it's safe. I know anytime I go to download vector graphics, you're never quite sure from these websites what other things are downloading to your computer. So check them out, idpdirect.com. Let's get back to the show. Again, as a creative, there's so many different things that you don't think about. And uh, I, I remember speaking to uh, Kevin Marshall at Microsoft after they did their um, adaptive box controller packaging design, which was like super easy to open. Like it, everything just kind of had a, like this amazing process. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he said was like, you can't design for people without them. I mean, it's like you can't design for them without them. Um, mm -hmm. And it's like if no matter who you're designing for, like you, they have to be part of the process. They have to be included and you can't assume that I you can that. picture what somebody else you yeah. know, goes yeah. through. Yeah. Um, and it totally makes sense. Like the, if I can't open this product and I buy a product that I can't open, mm -hmm. then yeah, it, it's a, it's a consumer for life. And yep. I was thinking, you know, as you were talking, I was kind of, I was, I was, I was Googling um, <laughs> the number of people that have like vision impairment in the U.S., oh. which is like the, the first thing people think about, mm -hmm. um, right? And I think it's like, it was like 6 million have some type of vision loss, in, including like completely being legally blind And versus, I, I'm sorry, but, but it was no, like versus like ahead. 50 million people have arthritis mm -hmm. in the U.S., which was like. It's a huge yeah. disparity and that seems like that would be the, that should be the, the priority is like ease of use. And then that kind of filters into everything else. And you know, that's um, interesting when you bring up just the vision loss, because that is a comorbidity of arthritis. So, you know, like a secondary um, um, issue that a patient with arthritis can have, you know, kidney disease and heart disease and further things because it tends to not only harden their joints, but there's, you know, um, 
other things internally that they struggle with. And so there's a lot of different comorbidities that go along with arthritis and, and vision is one of them. You know, we have had some brands that have come to us and just discuss the, the putting Braille on packaging to go that one step further mm -hmm. as you're thinking about like an overall vision. What does that look like in the design standpoint and how do you speak to um, you know, all the different, we call them functional limitations, you know, outside of um, just arthritis pain, or if, mm -hmm. even if you think about if you, you know, break your wrist, you're going to be in pain for a while. And not necessarily are you going to have an arthritis diagnosis, but you're still going to struggle trying to get something open or trying to use something that hasn't been designed with ease of use in mind. And then you have, you've got the ease of use seal being super naive ease of use for me is something completely different, right? Um, whether it's like how I'm interacting with the product or if it's a, if it's a liquid, then ease of use for me, it's like how easy it is to unpack it or to, to pour it out versus mm -hmm. actually getting in to the pack. So with this seal, is this something that I've never seen it? And maybe it's because I haven't looked for it. Um, right. And once yep. you're looking for something, then you see it everywhere. You see, you're looking for red car, you're going to yes. see a red car every, every day. Yes. Um, so is this seal specific to arthritis um, or can it be used for, for some of these other issues as well? So, yeah, it's, um, it's, I think it's, the specific part of arthritis is because it's the arthritis foundation that is certifying the products and packages, right? But when the testing is being done um, at the lab, you know, they're doing all kinds of um, testing from linear and rotational. And, you know, a lot of that mm -hmm. is in included in the lab factor. Our scientist uses um, the Americans with Disabilities Act, and there's a section 508 that he really um, implements as far as the layers that he's putting in. So it's not specifically, you know, arthritis, but it is the human factor section that we do. We do use arthritis patients. Um, some of them are, um, you know, have severe um, joint deformities that, you know, really and then some of them not so much so that we can get a range. But the patients we use specifically are arthritis. I think when you, if you think about if you make something that is easy for someone with arthritis to use, it's easier for anybody to use, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And then like looking back at that pack that you showed with the lid that almost looks like a hot water, you know, your, yeah. your dials yes. on you. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what it looks like. Um, does that packaging cost more? So if I was to buy a hundred pills of X product with a standard lid versus a hundred pills of the product with the ease of use, does that cost more? Okay. You know, there's a, there's a couple um, of the brands that also do private labels. And mm -hmm. so like we have a, a pill, there's a pill dispenser and it private labels at CVS and at Walgreens also, and it's branded with the seal. So there are private labels and there are, you know, brands out there, but the cost isn't the, it's not being, um, the cost is not being pushed to the consumer. Excellent. Yeah. It makes a big difference. No, of course. Yeah. I'm, yeah and I'm thinking it, it's not, it wouldn't be fair because I have an inability to open it that I now have to pay more in order to open your product. Exactly. Um, exactly. But, um, you know, people like to, people like to raise prices on everything. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So then what are some, I guess, do you have any, do you have any specific packs out there that are, that could use a better design for arthritis? What are products that people like to get into that have the most oh, difficulty? Man. Honestly, I would tell you that I think you could walk through, and I'm just going to use grocery store as a, yep. just a generic, but I think you could walk through any grocery store in the household section, in the beauty section, in the, I mean, just literally any mm -hmm. area, and there would be several products that could be redesigned. Um, we are working with some, some brands and some companies that have run several packages through testing mm -hmm. and out of the packages that they have tested 
half of them have not passed because of the design. So, I mean, and they've sent through large numbers just to kind of, you know, their goal was we want to see of what we have, what's really easy to use and what's not easy to use. And um, half of them, a little bit, I would say probably three fourths of them did not pass. And they would have to go back in and do a redesign on them because they were too difficult to use for um, the testing process that it went through. Is there, um, what are low hanging fruit in terms of designing for someone with arthritis? Like when you ask that, what do you mean? Like a product, like a low hanging fruit of a product or? Like, yeah, what's the easy, what would be the easiest change that a brand could make? That would make a big difference. Wow. I think there's a lot of different things and it depends on what the design is because Mm -hmm. it could be if it is, you know, pressure and opening it. When you think about that, is it a, um, is it just the, the torque kind of that is Mm -hmm. lighter? I think that's probably one area. I think uh, the the grip, you know, Mm -hmm. instead of, so I have a pin here that is, and that's the grip is um, it's wider and it's mm-hmm. not as small. So I think thinking about grip and thinking about the amount of pressure that it takes for a hand to to utilize that grip, I would say probably those would be like the two biggest things are the immediate grip and the amount of mm-hmm. pressure that you can put into either turning or pulling back you know, on a, on a spray or a twist. So I would say those probably are the two biggest things to think about. Okay. And then um, how about texture? Is texture an issue when it comes to like something slick and smooth versus, okay. Yeah, it's a great question. And texture, even in the guidelines we're talking about, we have a section specifically on texture and the type of texture that would be really good to include. And, um, you know, just as far as thinking about it, does it have a grid in it? Is it a little bit, you know, where it's something that you can, um, rotate a little bit differently, but yeah, texture is definitely another, um, item to think about. Okay. And I know, um, just like anything else, arthritis doesn't look at, um, doesn't look at the brands that you care about, right? You have, uh, you've got arthritis, whether you're driving a Lamborghini or a Honda. So when we're, (laughs) if we're talking about like luxury brands and, you know, if we're looking at luxury brands and we're talking about like, say, perfumes or fragrance uh, and cosmetics, right? These tend to be smaller packs already. Um, if you're at a, if you're at one of these brands, you're designing one of these products, how do you, how do you work with the arthritis foundation to, to go through this testing? So it's a great question. And I think just the fact when you start thinking about it, it's, mm-hmm. you know, connect with us and we will, um, Typically what we do, the testing process takes anywhere from four to six weeks. Um, when you connect with the Arthritis Foundation, we bring our scientists in from the lab. Mm-hmm. The um, And then we'll, you know, if there's any question on any particular, um, he he typically likes 36 products of each item so that they can go through both lab and human factor testing. And so we will... Um, coordinate that. There's obviously a a fee for the item to go through testing. And then once it passes testing, he will send a test report and it's typically 26 to 28 pages. And it's inclusive of every lab test that he runs through and every um, patient that is being tested, what their feedback is. And then if it passes, the Arthritis Foundation will license the seal to the company and then they can use it in all of their marketing, all of their, you know, just literally anything they do. If it doesn't pass, um, he, the scientist, he'll put in our, um, He'll put in ideas on, mm-hmm. you know, if you would change this, this would make a difference. And he also would do a consultation call with them as well to talk through, you know, maybe you should should um, implement this change and that might make a difference. And I think we could, you know, go through and it would pass. So we try to work as closely with the brands as, as we can. And then, you know, from from the from the marketing side, we just had one of our companies um, that did a national TV campaign and it launched in March and it overproduced so much. They were promoting the product Mm -hmm. with ease of use and it overproduced to their expectations. They, they went out of stock. They sold out of everything. And so, you know, that was, um, 
that was really interesting for us because you know, just the fact that when people know that there's a product out there that's easy to use, it's like, this is where we want to go. We want to get this. So, Sure. And um, I can't get old people out of my head. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm trying. I'm like, I'm trying to picture a, a kid. <laughs> no, but I'm trying to picture like, a, you know, a, a, a kid with this. And I'm not laughing at, at, at that's just that it, again, it's like these biases are kind of built in. Yeah. Yes. And, so like I was talking about like, you know, luxury products, I'm envisioning somebody that's kind of aging up, have these, you have these products for life. Um, but at some point in some, at some point when you develop arthritis, these products then that you've used your, your entire life become more difficult to use. Right. So that's when you start finding, looking for something alternative yeah. or yeah. you just struggle uh, and, and keep going. But if you look at the other end of the spectrum, you know, when we're talking about kids. Like what are the like what are the challenges that you're seeing there, and on our brands uh, addressing uh, addressing this with with packaging for them? You know, that's a it's a great question because you know these kiddos um, they suffer and they can have where their joints swell up so badly that they're they can't walk, so their knee might swell up so much that they're not able to walk and they're in so much pain, or you know their hand joints swell, and they're not able to do and it can be very severe for kiddos. They're just not able to be active. Some kids have to miss schools until they find the right medication that really can help them you know sustain a little bit. Um, you know they're taking um, injections or um, infusions to try and maintain this, but I have not yet seen a company that is really focused on, nor have I spoken with a company that is focused on kiddos, because I think to your point, there's such an image of older people. And when I tell people, oh my gosh, there's so many kids that live with arthritis, they're like, really? I had no idea. And so, you know, from a brand perspective, if you think about, you know, I go back, I go back to crayons because, you know, Several years ago, we had a company that brought a, a triangle crayon and asked if we would just have some kids that could try it and, and use it. And it worked so much better for them, just the shape of it mm -hmm. versus, you know, a, a stick crayon. And it, it doesn't have to be crayons. It can be writing utensils. It can be, I mean like think about toys and just anything yeah. that kiddos use if there's something that's easier to access i mean even toothbrushes for that matter sure. are you know for them to hold sometimes is it's a, it's tough so there are some companies though that are um have started adaptable clothing lines and so they're looking at um you know if it's instead of zippers and jean you know like on jeans it mm -hmm. might be zippers and snaps it's velcro or something that's easy to wear. Yeah. And I think, you know, that also not only impacts kiddos with arthritis, but if you think about um, kids with autism, where, you know, the fabric mm -hmm. or the just the noise from the zipper might, they might struggle a little bit with. So we have seen a little bit in adaptive wear, but not a lot in just packaging. If finding your spec data is a wild goose chase around your office, you've got a data problem. Specra is the only cloud-based management specification solution that every brand needs. Because if you don't spec right, you'll spec wrong. As you're talking and I'm Googling, just seeing that there's over 200,000 kids that, that are affected with arthritis under 18. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good number. And I'm sure these will, will develop into adults with arthritis. I, obviously, there's yep. no, there's, yes. there's no yeah. way around it. So. Mm -hmm. Um, again, it goes back to that product for life. And I guess as a brand, if your brands are challenged by competitors every day, mm -hmm. um, you know, you go to the grocery store, there's a million different products with the same, there's a million different brands of the same product. Yeah. Um, so you've got a lot of options out there, but if you're ease of use, then if that's a component that you're focusing on, it becomes a competitive advantage. If we're just talking about from a marketing and branding perspective, it yep. becomes a competitive advantage because whether it's kids, parents, grandparents, once you've got that consumer and you're addressing their, their need, they're not going to leave. 
not because the other product is better or cheaper, but because they can't get into that. And this is yep. making their life yeah. easier. Yeah, we. I would say the majority of our brands have said it's a shelf differentiator and we give them certificates to take into buyer meetings, you know, so that that's part of one of their selling points. Um, you know, and you, to your point earlier when you said, I you know, haven't seen the seal, but I don't know to look for it. it Products are sold in Target, in Walgreens, sure. in CVS, in Lowe's, in Home Depot. So, I mean, they're, you know, Amazon, I think almost every one of our products has its own store page on Amazon. So, they're, they are being sold everywhere that you and I go and many grocers. But if you don't know to look for it, then, you know, it's right. not even going to register with you when you see a package that has it on there. So, you know. Again, I, I can't tell you how naive I am when it comes to arthritis. No, this is great. This but, is what we're here for. Right, but this, but this is like I think the majority of us. If we don't have it, yes. then yeah. you just picture what you've seen. You know what you've seen, maybe your grandparents or what you see on TV. Like you don't really understand like how far this goes. Um, it's not just it's not just in your hands and fingers. Obviously, this can be throughout your body. So when you're talking about torque, it it's not just a matter of grip, but then also like you know, when you're rotating your shoulder, when you're, yeah. um, or lifting. lifting. Yeah. 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 There's mm -hmm. so many different things, whether it's like, you know, um, it's not just the small products, but if, if I bought a, a computer or a, a toaster yeah. and it comes in a box, like what kind of a grip is in there? There's, there's some or things mountain, that, yeah. like a remote from a, um, TV remote, you know, is there a way to design that so that it's bigger and your hand fits in yeah. it a little bit better? Yeah. Oh my God. The Apple TV remote must be the most horrible thing on earth. Those things are hard to use, you know, normally cause they're so slick and so tiny. Um, uh -huh. yeah. oh my gosh, I would throw that thing out the window. Um, so you've also brought a couple other products, right? You have, you had that lid. I'd love to see what other types of products couple, have been adjusted. Like, the ones that I could actually just fit in. So, you know, mm -hmm. like Dr. Grip has a pen that is gripped. And what I love is that they have the seal on it in the back and the front. And mm -hmm. one of the nice things too, I think that some of these products are sold in the U.S. and in Canada. And we work with the Arthritis Society in Canada as well. So they could be branded. Duracell has a line of hearing aid batteries that are have an easy open tab mm -hmm. so you can easy open. Now that probably is more to your thought process on yes. older people. <laughs> um, but this pill container, it has our old seal on it. We, mm -hmm. we changed the seal a couple of years ago. I think what's so cool about some of these products is, um, so my daughter is 38 and she travels all the time for work. And so I gave her one just, you know, so she could throw vitamins in. And she was like, ah, this is great. Can you get me two more? I want one for night and I want to put my earrings in them. You know, and it's like, because it's easy. She doesn't have arthritis, but it's easy to use. You know, and then, I mean, Advil has this this cap that you were talking about earlier that looks like a, like a, a I don't know what you call it, a washer or like yeah. a... <laughs> something. I call it a flower because, you know, I'm female and I'm in the flower world and I'm like, oh, it kind of looks like very, you know, circular. But then the seal is on that as well. Um, there are, gosh, there's garden um, nozzles, a whole line of garden nozzles mm -hmm. that have a design specifically for them. Garden hoses, um, walking poles. Urban Polling makes these really amazing walking poles that you know, you don't certainly need arthritis, but the grip is easy. And if you think about all the people that are hiking today, you know, those are great poles to have from a hiking perspective. There's so many different um, things. And then the other thing that we do that is more in the medical world is we also test and certify all medical devices. So we have a lot of um, medical devices. If you think mm -hmm. of a pharmaceutical company or their bottles. And we, we have some companies that have even tested um, individual capsule pills where there's a dent in the pill so that you can put your finger in the dent to pick it up. So, I mean, there's a variety of things that you can, you can purchase, you know, from a, if you're on a consumer space, once you know about the seal, you know, from the design space, again, it's still like working to, as we launch these guidelines to really be able to share, you know, here's what you should be thinking about. Here's from an accessibility perspective, because it's not just arthritis, you know, when you change it for that person, 
it's a game changer in, yeah. you know, in the packaging world. No, and I, I think um, just anything that I'm trying to get into like, that I find difficult, if it's difficult for me, yeah. um, you know, I guess as a designer, if it's difficult for you to open, just imagine the difficulty somebody else will have, right? So if it's, you have to make things easier, um, perforations, um, I guess like indicators on how to even open things. Do you yeah, need education on the pack for directions making, on, the, on yeah, how to do this? Making sure that the font size isn't too mm -hmm. small and the font size is, is good. I think one of the things that's so cool about it is like from the foundation perspective, you know, one of our goals outside of literally everything else that we do to change these people's lives is we want to be able to give them their yeses. And, you know, when you have a package designed that is easy to open, you're providing that individual with their independence so they don't have to go to somebody else and say, can you get this yeah. open or can you help me with this because I can't do it? And it empowers them. And when you think about loss of independence and loss of empowerment, then it goes into mental health. And I was just reading an article on, um, I think it was in Food Dive, on companies starting to think about food waste. And, you know, I'm like, I would even go so far as to say that if you can't open a package, it ties into food waste because if, if you can't get it open and then you have to ask someone to help you open it, but then you can't open it a second time, I would get rid of the product. Yeah. I just bought a a really square container, you know, like of nuts, because I'm hosting a party next week and I was like, oh, it's on sale, so I'll buy it. So I went home to open it. I couldn't get it open. I went over to my neighbors. I held the oh, container and she's yeah. trying to turn it. And finally we took scissors and propped it open. And that's a food product. And I, the whole time I'm like, okay, <laughs> if I didn't really need this, I would yeah. pitch it because I don't need to get into them that much, but then that goes back into food waste and, mm -hmm. you know, it's all very cyclical, I think. Wow. Um, now, and then you, you mentioned, all right, so part of the testing you mentioned was a lab test and then there's the human uh, component to it. What's happening in, in, what's happening in the lab test? So the lab test, the, the scientist that we work with is Dr. Brad Fain, and he is um, a Regents researcher at Georgia Tech. And he established their accessibility and evaluations facility. And he's just a couple of years ago um, also started the Intuitive Design Applied Research Institute, which is where he does all of the testing for um, all of the lab work. And then he does all of our human factor evaluation either. To be perfectly honest, I've never actually watched him do any part of the lab testing. So I don't know what he does. I know um, we list it all in our sample test report as far as, you know, just, I know it's based on pressure and, you know, just a lot of torque and a lot of the um, um, just rotational and, you know, what that looks like and, and texture. And he looks up font. So he does all of that from the lab side, but I, I've never seen it before. So um my goal, and I just took this program over two years ago, and what my goal really was is to evaluate it and learn. And so I'm excited, too, because I want to go and yeah. see what he does in the labs. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, okay. I mean, no, amazing. Um, yeah, because I'm just thinking, like, okay, well, what's happening in this lab? Is it, you know, is it materials? Is it, like, I'm sure there's, like, a whole list that you got to go through in order to, yeah, to pass. Yeah, I know and he then... has very specific specifications. Mm -hmm. You know, he also... Um, he does this testing for us in the U.S., but he tests for in New Zealand and in Australia and also in, in Canada. So he's testing globally for ease of use within these different countries. Because arthritis isn't just in the U.S. No, no. Right. Yeah, it's all <laughs> um, over. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, okay, no, so I, I appreciate you coming on here and kind of just educating us on arthritis, on some of the challenges. And I think... Again, as a designer, this is like a really big opportunity. Um, yeah. You know, when we talk about the number of millions of people that need help getting in and out of packaging and product, you're the designer, you're the one that can help. Um, I know a lot of times brands will be like, well, I don't necessarily want a big tab on here. But if they understand mm -hmm. the reasoning and they understand that they're helping someone um, and being able to provide some proof, uh, being able to certify it through the Arthritis Foundation, 
um, I think that that helps change that conversation. So again, if you're a designer out, then you're like, I think we need to make this a little bit easier to get into. Here are the benefits. But yes. the benefits outweigh any type of aesthetic challenge that you may that you may face. And as a designer, it's your job to make it work. Uh, but yeah, I, I, again, I've never, I can't say I've never considered uh, arthritis in, in my packaging design, but it's not top of mind, mm-hmm. right? When you're designing aesthetically and structurally, you're focused on the product and how it fits and how it functions. Um, and you're thinking of all the different users in your process, whether it's somebody that's doing the fulfillment or the unpacking or yeah. even, the, you know, the user throughout that process, it's, you know, and I'm just speaking for myself. I don't consider anybody in that, um, that value chain being somebody with arthritis and there's a pretty good chance that someone does. So how do you make yeah. it easier? If you think about four out of five adults have arthritis, that's big, you know, so you are impacting that and touching somebody. And also, you know, I think from a design perspective, when you're designing a product, you know, if you could think about it from the the end place where, well, if I make this easier to use and more accessible, I'm empowering somebody, I'm giving back their independence, perhaps I'm giving them a little bit of um, a yes back in their day or making their day a little bit easier because they're able to do this, then it, you know, it just, that's a big thing for a designer to be able to create something that kind of, you know, it's, it's like kind of like a game changer in somebody's life, you know? I mean, you'll have people that will be like, oh my gosh, I don't use anything but this because it's amazing. And, you know, you go back to creating consumers for life and, you know, to our point, what we want to do is give, give the arthritis community a a yes every day so that they can, you know, have something um, that they can do with that they maybe couldn't do before. And designers can help from that perspective. Amazing. And then you're releasing the packaging or the design guidelines um, in January. In January, the first two. So we have five all together. So. Where, uh, where can somebody get these or how do they get them or who gets them? How does this work? So we're just finalizing our marketing plan, but they can get them mm-hmm. on arthritis.org um, backslash, backslash ease of use. And, um, you know, they can certainly reach out to me as well. So I can, um, send them out, but we'll be doing, um, we'll be sharing them in a lot of different, um, spaces. So hopefully, um, we'll, they'll have access to them everywhere. So, but definitely on arthritis.org. Okay, perfect. And they're available to anybody that from anybody that's perfect. And the, the thing that's really great about them for me is, Visually, there's a lot of illustrations in there that are showing, um, you know, it might be a, a particular design of bottle caps. And so the um, experts we've worked with, their illustrators have done all of the illustration for us. And, you know, there's a, here's a reason, here's an issue, here's how to perhaps solve mm-hmm. it. So what we're trying to do is make them very um easily accessible and readable, um, you know, not like a textbook. So they're much yeah. more visually appealing, um, which I think makes it, you know, I don't know, it's just easier to go to and find what you need. And, you know, we've had engineers and designers giving us input throughout the way as far as what they look like. And so I'm excited to share them with you. So I will, as soon as I get um, one, I will send it to you right away so you can take a look at it. Oh, Amazing. Um, Deb, thank you so much. I appreciate you being on. Um, this was super educational. Um, like I said, I, I think now I can I can picture a different group of people with I'm arthritis. I'm so glad. That makes me feel good. Yeah. Um, yeah, because again, it's like you just have this picture in your mind and you're like, yes. all right, that's, I'm going to put this person in this box and then move on. But um, no, it, it, it affects everybody. So broader. definitely, yeah. I appreciate um, the conversation because that's definitely changed that for me. And I'll definitely be talking to my my clients and saying okay let's how somebody with arthritis is going to get into this pack um let's get it tested let's get it uh, reviewed yeah. because awesome. everybody well, just, giving people free up from a design right it does it Making really does it makes me feel super good life. yeah and yeah. that's that's always when you when you can impact somebody else's life in a positive way you know that's really like what we're all here for right you know yeah. Just making a difference in the world. Um, Avelio, thank you so much for having me on today. It's been a pleasure talking to you.